and the bowl I present them is my understanding of the bowl they made. And when I present to them my understanding of the bowl they made, they recognize that I'm trying to understand the bowl they made, but I don't quite get it right. So they get it back to me corrected. This has been research. They get it back to me corrected in a kind of dream state that if I do this often and make a practice of it, I start to see the dream during the day manifesting as pictures to me of the thing that I'm trying to research, the thing I'm trying to understand. They allow my consciousness to see the morphic field, we could say. I see the resonances of the parts that another person will look at and go, hey man, just a tree. I, I see it, or I hear it, or I recognize in the movement of data a pattern. So there's a Daniel Pink now, you know, the new MBA. The new MBA is the MFA. Master of, Bus new master of Business Administration is the Master of Fine Arts. Why is the Master of Fine Arts hired by corporations to look at spreadsheets? The reason why uh, Master of Fine Arts people are hired by corporations to look at spreadsheets is because they don't understand spreadsheets. When you understand spreadsheets, you go to one place. It's below the bottom line. And when you don't understand a spreadsheet, you look for patterns. And an artist is trained to look for patterns. So when we look for where an artist looks at a spreadsheet, they say, there's yeah, something kind of funny over there. I don't know what it means, but it's, it looks funny to me. <laughs> and then you bring the bean counters in, and they know where to go instead of trying to figure it all out from the bottom line backwards. So the new science is based on pattern recognition. So this, and that's alchemical. So if I wish to train myself, there are some diagrams that I can work with. The inverted triangle with a horizontal line, Earth. The inverted triangle with no horizontal line, water. A vertical triangle with a horizontal line, air, and a uh, uh, upright triangle with no line, fire. So we look at them, we go, okay, yeah, it's so like a symbol. Yes, so the idea behind the symbol is that you have to see it move. I'm going to explain to you how this moves. So I begin with earth, with the horizontal beam downward pointing triangle with a horizontal line. That is a symbol for the earth, which is the little triangle at the bottom, with a line of everything that's above the earth. That's what that's a symbol of. There's the actual manifest earth, and then everything that's above the earth. That's the split triangle. Then I go to water. Where did the line go if I moved it? So I can, if I move the line through the triangle up and up and up and up and up, the line that's in the middle of the earth triangle becomes the top of the water triangle. I move the line up in my imagination. I don't just look at it as a snapshot. If I make a little video of it and move the line up, I end up with water. Water has gravity, but it also has validity. And then I move to air. So air, I have an upward pointing triangle instead of a downward pointing triangle. And I see the line that was at the top of the water triangle has moved to the middle of the upward pointing. Now, I have everything below in uh, uh, gravity, and now I have the, the line is moving.
moving up until finally finish the fire, the line goes away, boom, nothing left of what you thought was here on Earth. And we call that combustion. And so the tri these triangles, you'll often see them in alchemical pictures, they're meant as a meditative device. I train myself to see morphological reality. To see how things transform inwardly. I have to prepare in my soul, in my, even in my life body, we could say in my heart, I have to prepare my heart with pictures that move in lawful ways. That heart organ is a specialist for qualities of motion. That's its function in the body. But I can create in that heart organ a deep sensitivity to how forms in the natural world are moving in their morphology. Some people would call that a green thumb. Some people would call that medical people, a good di diagnostic consciousness. You look at the person, the way they walk, the way they're standing, the way they're holding their arm, and you see things. The old shaman used to say, someone said, well, what is it you see when you look at people? I said, I see the same things you see, but I do something differently. We all see the same things, but we all don't perceive the same things. So I wish to perceive the life force. I can take an exercise like these four triangles and just work with it forwards and backwards before I go to sleep. When I go to sleep with an image like that, it goes off into the spiritual world as a question. And the question is, is this the way, this is this thing that I'm working with, is this the way this is moving? I'm asking a question of the spiritual world using a geometry of the spheres as a kind of guide for my consciousness. That allows them to recognize that my consciousness is engaging their world in a lawful way. That's what the alchemists did with their symbols, is they made a kind of pathway through the woods of how do I get information that's beyond my understanding. This is, we could say, a research method. So I, I have to, in order, you know, if you want to do research, uh, buy a microscope or something. You need a tool. This is a tool. This is an instrument for developing inner capacity for recognizing morphological changes. The earth and water, gravity, things go down. Air and fire, levity, things go up. I could use the four triangles as a meditative device. And guaranteed, if you play with this a little bit, you'll be led to a book somewhere where you'll flip the page and there'll be an alchemical image there with ladies standing on these triangles. And you'll go, wow, I know what that is. <laughs> Which is worth a lot. And that's just the first page. <laughs> three more symbols. So earth, water, and earth, fire are elements. And they go through the process I just described. But um, the, these are symbols for salt, sulfur, and mercury. <clears throat> and salt, sulfur, and mercury are compounds of earth, water, air, and fire. Compounds of levity and gravity. 
So on the bottom here, we have a circle with a horizontal line. And we know we're supposed to move it. That's our task. I'm going to ask you for a minute or so, just imagine that you're drawing that, or even on a piece of paper, take a pen, and draw it, and try to draw it so that you don't repeat any line, you don't go across another line, and you never lift your in instrument off the paper. So play with that a little bit. Draw it. The circle with the heart of the line, but draw it so that you never repeat across another line and you never lift the uh, pencil or pen from the paper. So it's possible to do that, yes? So let's go up to sulfur. Sulfur is an upward pointing triangle with a cross. I'd like you to draw, try to draw that in the same way. You never repeat a line, you, and you never lift the pencil off the paper. Can't do it. Okay. So if I were using that methodology of forming inner pictures, the salt, I would have a, an experience that there was a kind of continuity of things. I could go forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and never actually leave the salt. But in hidden in the sulfur, this is an image of sulfur, the upper pointing triangle with a cross below it, there's a kind of separation. And you can feel that when you try to, to move it. That's the very nature of salt and sulfur. Salt is a precipitate. And a precipitate comes out of a levity situation, a solution, into a manifestation. It's salt. So you mix salt in water, it becomes a solution, and then you evaporate the water and the salt comes. Yeah? That is what the alchemists call sal, S-A-L. And in sal, you have a certain kind of economy or a certain kind of continuity. Because you take the salt crystal, you look at it under a lens, you see it's made of little cubes. And you put it in water, and you heat it, and it goes away. Whoa, where'd it go? I don't see anything. And then you evaporate the water, and the salt comes back, and you look in the lens again. It's little cubes again. So in sal, what has manifest goes sort of halfway into, in, it goes into invisible world, but then when it comes back, it, it's the same as when it left. That's what they call sal. It's the whole realm of pH and uh, uh, flocculants and deflocculants and gels and colloids and nanoparticles and all of that stuff. It's a big industry, cell. Big industry of nanoparticles and keeping them in colloidal solution and all of that stuff. So just Google colloids and you'll be led into this incredible world of nanoparticles and field charges and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. That's all cell. And there's a, there are whole industries that have to do with keeping fluids in motion that don't precipitate out and da 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 and shelf life of hand creams and God, you know, are around this issue of cell. And the cell, then, the manifest becomes unman 